Welcome to this tutorial on mapping CIDR controls using the Warp Engine feature of the Tangent Mapper. If you're not already familiar with the Warp Engine, then please watch our other videos on it first. There's links to these in the information area below. You'll need to at least know the basics in order to understand this video. What do we mean by a slider? A slider is any control that you drag to change its value. A good example of this is a volume control. But not all sliders work the same way and it's these differences that we're going to discuss. Some you'll be able to control with the warp engine and some you won't. This video will help you decide if you can achieve what you want with the warp engine. The main limitation of the warp engine is that it can't be used on controls that move around on the screen. Sliders usually have a handle that you click on to drag them and so in effect they are controls that move around on the screen. The handle isn't always in the same place. But as you'll see there may be ways around this limitation. We're going to be using an element KB panel in this tutorial, but you could use any tangent panel. We'll use a couple of different applications, but the principles we discuss apply to any software that you're trying to map. Also note that the Warp Engine works with Mac and Windows operating systems. Let's get started by looking at a real example. Let's take a look at the playback level slider in Audacity as it demonstrates some of the typical problems when trying to control a slider with the warp engine. A couple of things to note about the playback level slider. If we click anywhere in the slider, its handle jumps to that point, but it won't let us drag it from there. We can only drag the slider if we click and hold on the handle and then drag. Keep these two things in mind as we now attempt to use the warp engine to control the slider. Let's record moving the slider by clicking on the handle and dragging. If we now test what we've done, we see it initially seems to work. But if we stop moving the knob and then start moving again, it doesn't work. Why? Well, let's look at the script we've recorded. The first line moves the mouse to these screen coordinates every time we start to move the knob. It then does a mouse click down and then it tries to drag from there. These screen coordinates are where the handle initially was when we recorded the script, but we've moved the handle from there. So what happens is the handle jumps to these screen coordinates. Remember what we said about controlling the slider. If we click anywhere in the slider, its handle jumps to that point, but it won't let us drag the handle. In effect, that's what we've just done. We've clicked in the slider where the handle isn't, so it jumps to where we clicked and won't allow us to drag. Every time we now move the knob, this behavior repeats, which isn't what we want. Luckily for us, there's a solution with this slider, which we'll discuss next. Sometimes sliders can be controlled with the mouse scroll wheel. This is what you can do with the playback level slider in Audacity. Let's record hovering the mouse over the slider and using the scroll wheel to move the handle. Now when we move the knob, the slider works as expected. It's worth checking to see if there are alternative ways to control the slider. These may be more suited to using the warp engine. Sometimes the slider will have a text box associated with it and you can drag or scroll on the text box in order to move the slider. Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve has sliders that work just like this. So let's look at mapping one of these. The RGB mixer sliders are vertical style sliders and to control these we have two choices. We can click anywhere on the slider and drag vertically or we can click and drag on the text box. Let's record warp engine scripts for both. First let's record dragging on the text box. Now we'll record dragging on the slider. Note we can click anywhere in the slider. As you can see, both method works fine for the slider.
We'll end with an example of a slider which we can't control with the warp engine. The Fairlight page in DaVinci Resolve has a slider that you can only control by clicking on the handle and dragging. There is no other method. Let's see what happens if we try. As you can see, it doesn't work, and for exactly the same reason why we couldn't drag on the playback level slider in Audacity. Except here there is an alternative. There is no way to use Warp Engine on sliders like this. That ends this tutorial. You'll find everything we've discussed in the Warp Engine Made Simple guide. You can find this by going to the help menu in the mapper and selecting the guide there.